Hello friends, and hello enemies. Today we are doing another toy face-off. We're pitting Fishman against Fishman. Jada Toy's Creature from the Black Lagoon versus NECA's The Shape of Water. Um, what is this guy's name? I actually never saw this movie. Does this Fishman have a name? So we'll just call him, uh, Hot Fishman. Which Fishman is sexier? We're gonna find out today. It is also the return of the fish ring. I thought it was appropriate. Also, just before we get into it any further, um, my nails look really gross today because I did some block printing earlier, so there's ink under my fingernails and it looks kind of gross. Sorry about that. Usually I try to make my fingernails, um, somewhat appealing. I guess appealing is a weird word for it. Not terribly gross, I think is what I'm saying. Anyway, let's look at the boxes first. I'm not sure that I've looked at a Jada Toys figure before, but I've heard they're really nice. So this is from their Universal Monsters line. Really nice packaging. I like how you see pretty much everything in there. It's got a nice window on the side too with some cool artwork. Lots of, uh, languages on the back. So simple, but appealing and effective. For NECA, we've got the classic Velcro tab cover box. On the inside, you've got a picture of the figure. See the figure here and everything he comes with. Oh, it says right here, Amphibian Man. Is that his name? He doesn't have a real name? I feel like if you're going to bang a fish man, you gotta give him a real name first. Some promo shots on the back. And that's about it. So I've actually never seen either of these movies, but maybe that gives me, um, a more objective eye when it comes to these men, creatures, fish, fishmen. Of course, we've got the creature and he is the standard 1 12th scale. NECA always runs a little bigger at around seven inches. So as far as height goes, we can't really give it to the amphibian man because NECA just be like that. I think realistically, height-wise, the creature would be taller. But this guy's pretty lanky, and he is played by Doug Jones, and that's a pretty tall dude. Also, height isn't everything. I've seen a lot of, like, stuff online about ladies only dating guys who are above a certain height, and I'm, I'm sure that's true in some cases, but a lot of us don't care, okay? And I don't understand why you would care. Cosmetically, they look pretty similar. They both have gills. They both have fins on their arms. Ooh, and on their legs. Let's look at the butt situation. Uh, there's not much of one going on here. There's a little demarcation, but it's, um, it's not much to speak of. Also, this guy looks slightly more human. I don't know if that is a positive or a negative, uh, for some of you, but just take that into consideration. Okay, so first off, I'm going to look at the creature. I've heard people say good things about this, and I have to agree. I really like the sculpt on this. There's a lot of differing types of texture, and it really makes the sculpt kind of dynamic and interesting. Some scaling on the chest, some scoots down the belly, more scoots on the legs, nice bony sculpt on the feet. Got some different shades of green throughout, some yellows. It's a bit haphazard and sloppy, but not in a way that detracts from the figure. It's more like a purposeful sloppiness, I would say. I mean, this is a swamp-dwelling fish man we're talking about, so I wouldn't expect him to be, uh, pristine. Very, very scary face. Scary face. Like I said, I haven't seen this movie, but doesn't he, like, kidnap a lady in it? <laughs> if I saw this thing coming for me, I, d I don't know. I think face-wise, Amphibian Man is a lot more appealing. He's just more human. His eyes aren't bugging out of his head. He's got proper human lips. Very nice lips, too. Look at that, uh, contour. Humanish nose. This guy is just too far away from human. IMO. Your, uh, opinion might vary. Remember, this is a video about which of these fishmen is hotter. Okay, so for articulation, not much up and down because he's got these big gills in the way. Some twist. He's got this, like, shoulder pad type deal going on. It's all one piece. Oh, his... okay. It's a chunky joint. It doesn't really want to move easily. But once you get it to move... can do some twist. Yeah, it keeps wanting to stick. Bicep swivel. Double elbow, not bad. Got some up and down and swivel on the hand. Twist at the chest. Ooh, some nice crunch at the torso. We get some twist there too. Ooh, twist there too. Leg up to the side. Twist at the thigh. Double knee action. And a pretty wide range of movement on that foot. And I like that this foot is so big. So you can really ground him. For the amphibian man, I feel like he needs a name. Amphibian man isn't a good name. He looks like a, um, a Greg to me, maybe. So for Greg, not 
much head movement. He's got these big gills in the way. They're rubbery, but the bottom part where his chin is actually hitting the gill is uh, more firm. Not much head tilt either. We're not quite into accessories yet, but I do want to mention when you have his arm spread like this, he comes with a plug-in that you can just like well, I'm, I'm holding it the wrong way, but you can slip it under his arms because he's got webbing under his arms. So that is a nice touch. They didn't have to do that, but they did. How do we feel about webbing under the arms? Positive? Negative? I really like this uh, elbow joint they've got going on. It's a very smooth and satisfying movement. Swivel on the hands, got some up and down on the hands. Barely any crunch, but he does have some movement at the chest. This body overlay is a little rubbery, so you can bring his leg up pretty far. Ooh. Didn't like that noise. That's about as far as his leg can go to the side. I still don't like that noise. Crunchy. Knee joint. All right, we got it. It's just kind of sticky. And some rock on that foot. Um, not much more than that though. And his feet are like human feet, so they're not very large. He stands okay usually though. The sculpt on him is beautiful, of course. Lots of little details. He's translucent in some areas, which is really a nice effect. The blue spots on him are also kind of streaked with metallic, and that is very cool looking. So yeah, as far as sculpt and paint go on this one, very nice. I typically like NECA a lot. They really let me down with The Last of Us 2, Joel and Ellie pack. I frequently say that that one was not made with love. This seems like it was made with love. So now let's look at accessories. The creature will come with an extra head portrait. So the head that came attached is, I guess, an angry screaming head. This is a more neutral head. He's not uh, quite so angry here. He will come with a grasping hand and um, a skeleton hand. I don't really understand the significance of this, but I didn't see the movie. He'll come with this cool harpoon gun. I'm assuming that's what the grasping hand is for. And an awesome net. Oh, I missed. There we go. Good enough. Harpoon gun fits well into the holding things hand and it wasn't difficult to get in at all, which is a plus. I don't like fighting with fingers to get accessories in the hand. The pegs are very small, so watch out. It is kind of difficult to get the other hand in just because there's this pointy bit here and it hurt my fingies. But otherwise, no problem. So the amphibian man, Greg, comes with a similar amount of accessories, but they differ wildly. Greg comes with a plate of eggs. I don't know much about the movie, but I do know that he eats eggs. He will come with two extra arms. The arms seem to be the same as they are on the figure. The hands are different, so I don't know why they just wouldn't give us different hands. He will also come with another head portrait, and I really like this one because the jaw is articulated. Isn't that so cool? You rarely see that on uh, figures like these. My thumbnail looks so gross, I'm sorry. Once again, I have ink on it, sorry. But I love that. You can see his little teeth inside. It makes a really satisfying sound when you clench his jaw together. Yes, I like that. Rawr, he's angry. He'll also come with this big base, this diorama piece, complete with real chains and these shackles to go on his neck and his hands. It's very sad. Why would they why would they do that to this fish man? There's little padlocks on there. That's a great detail. Overall, this is just um on its own is a really cool piece. So I think to put him on here, you do have to take off his head and his hands. I don't really want to I don't want to lock him up. So the joints on mine are really tight. I heated them up really hot for a while and it was still a struggle to get this alternate head on. I also took these hands off. Uh, just to see how hard it would be, and it was very hard. The pegs in there are very long too, so <laughs> I was worried about breaking them. Uh, just be delicate. And now this elbow is a little loose. It's just going to take some work to get his alternate pieces on and off. But I've also discovered that you don't need to take his head off to put the shackles on. But this just attaches like that. You can just hook it around his little frill here. It's not really clicking into place, but you get the idea. So as far as the hotness goes, there's a BDSM element here that some of y'all might be interested in. Uh, I don't know. It really just depends on your tastes. He is hard to stand up for sure. 
he's one that might benefit from a stand of some sort. What if he's the one serving you eggs? So I guess there might be a BDSM element with the creature too. I mean, he comes with this net. So I think we have a clear winner in this competition as far as hotness goes. It's, it's Amphibian Man Greg. But as far as toy quality goes, they are both excellent. They both look awesome. They're fun to play with. A bit of a gripe with this guy switching out his uh, different parts. Creature was a little bit easier. Both fantastic toys, great sculpt, great paint apps, lots of fun, cool accessories. As a sea monster enthusiast, I'm also a fishman enthusiast. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, I think Greg is hotter because um, he and that lady develop a real attraction. Uh, they fall in love. Whereas this guy just tries to kidnap a lady, and that's not cool, okay? We're also ignoring the possibility that these two could be in a relationship of their own. You know, who can understand a fishman better than another fishman? So that's it for today. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned things about fishmen. I sure did. Which fishman would you bang? Let me know in the comments. Likes and subscribes are very much appreciated. Comments are more than welcome. And I'll see you guys on the next one.